Good to see you here this morning, I was going to say, this evening. And um, thank you to those that have been asking about Chris. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's, he's doing okay. It's not been straightforward, the op that he's had on his hand, but uh, he'll, he'll be fine. I'm sure he will. So thank you for your um, concern and your prayers, and uh, I'll pass all that on to him. And um, we're going to have a, I think, a really special evening this evening. And uh, we're going to hear testimonies, and we're going to sing and worship and praise God together, and a little treat in store later. So uh, let's just uh, open our service and uh, with prayer, give this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that as we heard on Sunday, Lord, it's not the building that's the church, we are the church. And we, the church, gather this evening to give you praise, to hear, Lord God, your um, work that you've done in people's lives, to be reminded again perhaps of our own times of testimony when you have intervened in our lives, when you saved us, when you brought about a miracle, an answer to prayer. And Lord, we just thank you for all of those things that you've done for us. We pray this evening, Lord, your anointing and your blessing upon each person that will share their testimony. Whatever it is that is in their heart to want to bring this evening, we pray, Lord, you'll take that and carry it into our hearts, that, Lord, it would bless us, would inspire us. Just pray for each person. They would know your presence and your power at work in them. So, Lord, we give ourselves to you this evening, and we thank you for the privilege of being able to meet once again in your name, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a couple of grand old hymns to start with. Um, one, a great Pentecostal hymn from my past, Send the Fire. Now, there is a line here that I don't entirely agree with, but we'll just brush over that and go with the sentiment. And that is where it says, we need another Pentecost, because actually we don't, because we have had Pentecost. But maybe it's, we need a personal refilling and refiring and refreshing. So let's take it in that way, shall we? And enjoy this rousing hymn together. Let's stand.
what a shock we'd have if he did. I stand amazed in the presence. And uh, we're going to hear about that now from uh, Marcia. Is going to kick us off. Thank you, Marcia. We're looking forward to this. We always see her on the platform, but I, I have never heard a testimony. Jump on. Good evening, everyone. I am totally and completely out of my comfort zone here. Uh, Perhaps I should have said it to music. <laughs> um, uh, just the other day, actually, I was looking through some stuff and I come across my baptismal uh, verse. And that verse is from Philippians 1, uh, verse 6. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. And that was on Sunday the 28th of March, 1971 at the Elim Church in Clapham, South West London, which was my home church. And coming up 25 years, 52 years later, <laughs> here I am still enjoying the goodness of my God, and I am forever thankful for that goodness. That word thankful is what I want to talk about. Some definitions of that word thankful. Contented, grateful, indebted, overwhelmed, pleased, relieved, beholden, appreciative. I'm all of that to God. In the latter part of last year, I read or heard someone say, we should make a point of finding something to be thankful for every single day. So at the beginning of this year, 
instead of making a daft New Year's resolution, like the much used eat less, exercise more type of thing, which I don't know about you, I never ever stick to, I decided on a word for my year, and that word is thankful or thankfulness. It's easy to thank God for the big stuff, like when our son had a horrific motor accident and he survived it and he's well to this day. And as Christians, we naturally thank God for his love and for giving his only son so that we might have eternal life. But sometimes we take for granted the small everyday things that he does for us. So every day now, I write in my journal something that I'm thankful for. I'm not gonna read all 30 plus entries to date from this year, but this is how some of my days have been so far this year. I'm thankful for waking up to sunshine and blue skies, mostly. <laughs> I'm thankful for this wonderful life that God has allowed us to have. I'm thankful for a good day in the house, this house on a Sunday when we are together worshiping. I'm thankful for my boys, my hubby, wherever he is, my long suffering hubby, my handsome son and my fantastically gorgeous grandson. I'm thankful for our son's new job offer. Just God was in that. I'm thankful for God's favor. This is a good one. I'm thankful for driving licenses. Yes. <laughs> and that's a whole other story. Uh, back in October, we had to renew our Spanish driver's licenses. So we did everything and everything was all hunky-dory. And uh, the lady said, oh, about four weeks, you'll have it back. Anyway, three months later, we were still waiting. And there was a lot of stress in our house. <laughs> and we decided to go up to Elche and see the guys at Traffico and managed to get a, you know, a duplicate one done. Anyway, two days later, the original ones turned up in our posts. <laughs> so there was great rejoicing in our household. And uh, my entry that day was driving licenses, underlined with lots of exclamation marks by it. I'm thankful for money in the bank. I'm thankful for a wow kind of a day. I'm thankful for the A-team. You all know who you are. Thankful for a nice day in the end. I can't remember what sort of day that was. Thankful that God has the plan. Thankful for the coffee club girls and building relationships with them. Thankful for carefree, relaxing days. Thankful for our city council finally tidying up the park across the road so we can see, see over it and see how lovely it looks. Thankful that all things work together for good. It will be interesting to flick back through my journal at the end of this year and read all the things that I've been thankful for and then be thankful all over again. And finally, today's entry in my journal will read, thankful, pleased, relieved that I got through this little talk. <laughs> a great start to our evening, it really, really was. Because it says in the Bible, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. And that's what we've done. We've kicked off with thanksgiving. Thank you, Marcia. Well, we are going to sing now. And I asked um, all three of our special guests for a song. And, um, Marcia asked for eagle's wings, and we're going to sing that now, followed by faithful ones. So would you like to stand, and we'll sing these two wonderful songs together and pray that for those of us that need peace from bad memories, those of us that need to know God's presence restoring us, that these songs will actually speak to our spirits in a, in a very special way this evening. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me.
wonderful choice of songs there and I now like to invite finally Eva please to come and share with us good evening everyone I want to thank the Lord for this great privilege to give my testimony before I became a born-again Christian my father always say if there is an event in our school you recite your full name so my name is Evangeline Omli Delar. I am from the Philippines. My family are mostly Catholic. So I am the eldest of four children and have two sisters and one brother. My parents separated when I was young and my father died when I was 12 years old. We experienced many struggles in our lives as my mother was away from us working abroad in, many, in the Gulf of and Hong Kong. My mother couldn't afford to send us all to university, so I didn't complete my four-year course, preferring to let my sisters and brother to finish their studies. My mom was then working in Dubai, so I decided to apply at an overseas employment agency to follow her so together we could support the family. Because I was only 19 years old, I was not allowed to go to Dubai as the minimum age there is 22 years old, so the agency applied for my passport and changed the date of my birth so I could go and work in Dubai. Yes, and I am still young. <laughs> I had passed the interview. I was underage and eager to see my mother, but the agency lied to me and they found me work in Saudi Arabia. So I go in another country and I have no more choice. So I, I grab it. <clears throat> I have no choice but to accept the job. The family were Muslims, very rich and lived in a palace. They were a prince and princess. But I was not happy there. I called the agency after eight months to send me back home. I am a woman who likes to be busy. So I applied for a job in the Philippines, in an insurance company, but the pay wasn't enough to help support the family, so I applied again through the overseas agency to go to Hong Kong. This was fine and I worked there for seven years. Then I transferred to Macau, which is 45 minutes ferry ride from Hong Kong. There I met a Filipino man, the father of my daughter, Princess, but I didn't know at the time that he was in another relationship and had a family, so our relationship failed. And I have many struggles on that. Uh, it's a long story, but uh, the Lord knows everything. <laughs> Working in Macau for 13 years, 
I encountered many problems before I came to know the Lord in my life. I helped my sister Jane to come to Macau as she was a problem child in our family, one of my sister. She was stubborn and a lesbian. When she was in Macau, she was a big child for me. My employer was a Chinese family and born-again Christians. I worked for them for 13 years. They helped me a lot, encouraged me, and prayed for change in my sister. When I was settled in Macau, I used some of my sorry, I used some of my salary to rent a four-bedroom apartment. My sister had one room, and I rented out the other three. We call this a transient house in Macau. One day, a friend of mine introduced me to a male musician who had arrived from China and was looking for somewhere to live. So he became my tenant. He told me he was a Christian and he knew of a Christian church in Macau, although lots of Christian churches in Macau. He hoped to play the drums there one Sunday. He invited me to go to the church it was only a 20-minute walk from the apartment. I went from that Sunday. I went every Sunday. I think his name is Jason. God sent him as an instrument for me to know the Lord. I had a huge struggle to, met, to get my sister to come with me to the church. My pastor encouraged me to start a Bible study class in the apartment. So I, I held one there every Wednesday. My tenants, all my friends, were invited to join. The Bible study continued, and I received Jesus in my life as Lord and Savior. My sister was still a problem. I prayed for her. I cried to the Lord to change her. It was not good that each time I invited her to come to church with me or come to Bible study that she started screaming at me, but I never gave up until the Lord changed her. For five years, I prayed for her and my prayer was answered. We were both actively working in the church and studying. We have many trainings in the church. <clears throat> we finished our training and my sister was ordained as full pastora. We finished our training and my sister was ordained as a pastor in the Philippines to plant a church there where I was still working in Macau. I thank God for the opportunity my ex-employer -em ex gave me. They were very kind and counted me as one of their family. For 13 years, I enjoyed serving the Lord while I, wa I was working. God was using me my desire was answered prayer. I was assigned to go to Hong Kong every Sunday to reach out and evangelize. I am traveling every Sunday in 45 minutes ferry. And even though there is a storm when the boat is like that, I'm still in the boat. I go very early because I am staying in my job to my employer. I'm staying and I need to go back at the night to start the job for the Monday because I am staying. So I go early morning on Sunday. I go back at the night. So I'm, I'm, I'm there in my faith because you are traveling in the sea and the boat is doing like that. So, but I have the Lord. I have no fear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, <clears throat> We started a Bible study in one of the public parks in Hong Kong until God gave us a place, a prayer house, to have a prayer service every Sunday. So I will go every Sunday. I love to volunteer every year to go on a mission. The church had a goal for mission, so I saved some of my salary for the mission. I volunteered to go on missions to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Burma. That's why the preaching last Sunday, it's, it, there is a very huge impact in my life because we are carrying Bibles. But each of us 
uh, eight, we are eight. Every time we are eight or ten, we are carrying Bibles to travel going to Laos. Laos is a very strange country. If they will see your luggage that you have a Bible, you will be in the prison. Yeah. So, but we are still living in our faith. Yes. So I was going to, uh, sorry, I volunteered to go on missions, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Burma. I was going to Israel, but it wasn't to be as I had severe back pain and work was difficult. Because of this, I decided not to renew my contract to my employer. So I go, uh, I go back home. Then one of my prayers during the previous 13 years was answered as my contract was coming to an end and I met my husband, Chris, online. <laughs> and we chatted for six months, getting to know each other. And I prayed again that if he is truly the man God gave me that he come to Macau to see me. So it was answered prayer. Chris come to Macau to see me and met, met me. <clears throat> um, he did and he did it. We had an agreement that when we met for the first time, we would go to church, to the church introduce him to the pastor and seek a blessing on our relationship. Everything went well and I had freedom because being a worker in the church, God wants us to have discipline and avoid disciplinary action. This is, this is what I thought to our pastors that when, when you, you marry, you need to have a blessing for the pastors before you go to your marriage. So I have freedom. I am not afraid to sleep with him or whatever happens. Yeah, so I got a blessing from my pastors. We got married for four years ago in the Philippines and now here we are in Spain. Our marriage is successful and my family are happy for us. We found Soul Church, and now we pray that we grow together in faith. When I received Jesus into my heart, he gave me my life verse. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says here, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I am holding on until now, and I take comfort strength and hope his promises to me never fail but i need action to pursue his purpose for my life god is always there to rescue me from difficulties he has a plan he knows his plan for me and i know god has a plan for my life and in my current situation he is working on it to prosper me and give me hope it is a powerful word of God to encourage us. I want to encourage everyone through my life. It is a command or statement or a paragraph to trust God, to lead our lives in His ways. Doing so, we can avoid some lives pitfalls. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Whatever happens, God is in us and we enjoy serving God. He is our great shepherd. He is our great... Um, sorry. He is our great shepherd. He is our great chief, commander. Amen? Yes. So, <clears throat> everything happens. We have God in our lives. Last and last... Sunday, Pastor Chris always saying, God has a plan and work the plan. And the plan works in our lives. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you, Eva.
Now, if anyone had any doubt about what can come in a little package, now you know. So, Eva is going to sing a song that she has chosen that is very special to her. A song that is, was new to me, but now I know it. And I think it's very beautiful. So...
ask David if he would close in prayer for us. Which way? <laughs> Somewhere over here. Stand on tiptoe. Yeah, Father, we just thank you for what you have done amongst us this evening, Father. We just thank you for those words that we've heard, words of inspiration, words of sometimes hard words, words of, of experiences that were difficult. But through it all, Lord, we see that you are a faithful one. You are the one never, we will never, ever let you go. And Father, we just thank you for everything you've done. Father, we thank you for the healing of, of Chris and for the fact that he's had his operation. Father, we just pray for healing and for blessing on him. Father, we thank you for the money that has been given for the offering. Father, we pray that that will be used to the, to the fulfillment and the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. And as we go from here, we just pray a blessing on each one of us. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen.